My name is Dash Desai. I'm technical evangelist and developer advocate with StreamSets. And today I'm going to show you a few different aspects of StreamSets for Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse integration. Now the use case I've set up for this webinar is of a, a retail database or a retail marketplace, if you will. And the information is stored in a MySQL database with tables like orders, transactions, products, customers, and so on. And before diving into the Dataflow pipeline details, let me show you how to actually install the newly released uh, Snowflake library in StreamSets. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. Okay, so after you log in, you basically browse to Package Manager, which is located on the uh, top, top right. Click on Enterprise Space Libraries. Select Snowflake Enterprise Library and then click on this plus icon, which will actually ask you to accept terms and start the installation process. So in this case, I've already installed it, so, so I'm not going to go through uh, the process. But now let's look at one of the three data full pipelines that I have set up, starting with the first one. In this pipeline, what I'm going to show is how do you offload or bulk migrate a retail database, in our case, to Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse. And before we look at the different aspects of this pipeline, I'm going to show you the, the actual database that, that's running on Amazon. So this is what the database looks like. There's orders, departments, categories, and here's some a sample data uh, loaded in these tables. So there's about 60,000 uh, orders. There's about uh, 150, 145,000 order items, and so forth. It's like a master detail uh, type of situation happening here. Okay. So in this case, a pipeline is basically you have an origin and a destination. And in between, you can optionally insert different processors that will transform your data depending on the use case. So because this is a simple offload uh, of our MySQL database, there's an origin. Uh, in this case, I'm using JDBC multi-table consumer, which enables us to read data from multiple tables in parallel in a multi-threaded connection pooling environment. As you can see, there's a connection string that's connecting to AWS RDS. And a couple of things I want to highlight here are exclusion and inclusion patterns for tables. So what you can do is, um, using patterns, you can say which tables you want to include in the migration process and which tables you want to exclude. So in this case, using percent, I'm saying include all tables except test. On the Snowflake side, you basically provide all the connection info that's required by Snowflake, such as account information, credentials, and on the Snowflake tab, you, you provide information regarding your, your warehouse, your database, your schema. And one thing that I really want to highlight is this expression right here. This is allowing us to dynamically load the table names that are being processed through by the origin. So I don't have to, you don't have, you don't have to hard code any table names, you don't have to provide um, column names or table names or anything like that. And by checking this checkbox, table out of create, we can ensure that the tables get created automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what this setup looks like on, on Snowflake. So I have my database, dash underscore DB, I have a retail schema underneath. And as you can see, there are no tables. All right, so let's go ahead and run this pipeline. It'll take about, it'll take less than a minute to go through all the records. Down here is where you can see the metrics around what, what's being processed, how many input records are being, uh, being read, and how many output records are being, uh, being, being written to uh, destination, which in this case is Snowflake. 
So I'm going to switch over to uh, Snowflake and and see what's going on. So as you can see, all the tables have been created, and the data is being loaded as we as we look at this uh, the schema on Snowflake side. Take a couple of seconds, but I really want to highlight one one thing while the pipeline is running. Um, if you wanted to replicate this database in real time, instead of a one-time offload, which I'm demoing right now, you choose one of the change data capture origins, and along with that, uh, you would check this checkbox, and that's all you would have to do. So it looks like our pipeline's finished uh, migrating all the data. We can go back and refresh. And now we can immediately start running some of the queries. For example, top 10 most popular products. If I run this query, and there you have it. You can run queries like top 10 revenue generating products. So that's cool. That's uh, one of the pipelines I had set up for this demo. The second one that I want to go through is of a, a uh, data enrichment where we will enrich our existing data set by ingesting HTTP web server logs uh, and store them in the same, same data warehouse. So before we look at the pipeline, I want to show you what the actual data looks like in a, in a text file. So this is what uh, uh, our web logs uh, text file looks like, and this is what we're going to ingest uh, using our, our pipeline and store it in the same uh, Snowflake uh, Cloud Zero warehouse. So it's pretty typical. Uh, there's IP address in there. There's HTTP response codes. Uh, there's platforms. Uh, there's the actual URL, um, uh, the page views, and, uh, and, and so on. So switch over to the pipeline. And here what I'm using as a origin is a directory. And the cool thing about this is it has a built-in parser to log, to parse the uh, uh, log entries, if you will. So you basically, you don't have to write any custom code to parse through all the fields in, 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 the, in, the, in the log entries. And this, this processor here allows us to convert some of the um, some of the fields into uh, data types that, that we, we, uh, we want. For example, timestamp is converted to date time, uh, HTTP version is converted to double, and, and so forth. Using this processor, what we can do is extract the product names from the URLs just by using expression language. So here what I'm saying is if a URL contains a department, and a product, you know, um, extract the product name from it. And, and I'm also converting the, uh, uh, the, the, the CDP encoded URLs into UTF-8 so they're more, more readable. And then the destination is the same. We have similar information. And here, uh, you will notice that I have specified a table name because it, it's one table that we want to ingest the data in. Again, the table doesn't exist, but I'm going to ch uh, I have checked out table auto create. So before I run the pipeline, I want to show you how you can preview the data before the uh, before the data is actually processed through and stored in Snowflake, just so you can look at what these different transformations are, are doing to the individual attributes. So here, these, these columns, the, these fields are being converted into uh, uh, their respective data types. Using this processor, we're able to, for example, let's look at uh, this URL. So as you can see, that's, you know, uh, it's not encoded, so once I convert that to UTF-8, uh, it's more readable and and let's see, uh, from here we also extracted a product name, which is this right here. So anyway, now let's go ahead and run this pipeline. 
Again, you'll see some metrics down here. Currently, we don't really have web blocks table, so that should be auto created. Okay, this is some data flowing in, so let me refresh. And there's the web blocks table. I'm going to go ahead and stop the pipeline for now. Okay, so one thing I want to highlight in here is since these log entries are pure inserts, meaning once they're written out, they don't really change. So what you could do in this case is you could use a snow pipe for achieving really high throughput. And that can be done by checking um, snow, uh, use snow pipe on Snowflake, Snowflake data, data tab. So uh, Snowflake and then data tab, uh, Snowflake, and use snow pipe. Well, the couple of things that you have to keep in mind when you want to use Snowpipe is, is that in order to use Snowpipe, Snowflake requires you to create a pipe prior to writing the data, and you, you also need to create one pipe per table. So, so this is a perfect use case for, for a Snowpipe where uh, it's a single table and it's pure instance. Now, moving on to the third pipeline, uh, data drift, where We'll look at adding more information midstream and see how the data gets handled where additional columns that we're trying to inject uh, get created automatically in Snowflake. So the pipeline looks very similar to the one that we just, uh, we just looked at with one new processor inserted in, in the middle right before we store data um, in our data warehouse. So what we're trying to do here is using our GeoIP processor, we'll add a location information based on client IP that's part of the log entries. So let me just preview the data so I can show you what the records might look like before we actually store it. So let's look at one of the records. Uh, let's see. Okay, here. So based on this IP, this processor basically gave us city, latitude, longitude, and country. And that will be stored in the same table as, that we created in the, in the, uh, the pipeline before um, we, look, we started looking at this one. So I'm going to stop the preview and run the pipeline again. I'll go back to Snowflake. As you can see, we don't have any location information just yet. And as the data is coming through, we'll go back to Snowflake and check. While that's happening, I wanted to show you a few web logs based queries. If I run this query, because we were able to extract the product name from URLs, now we can correlate products um, that are present in our database across our web logs. We can also check how many requests are failing or, and how many are succeeding by, by running a query like this. So if I go ahead and refresh now, we should have additional columns being added. So here you can see we have city, latitude, longitude, and country being inserted. And that was done through, through, through this pipeline that's still running. But because of this, now we can run location-based queries, for example, what are the top 10 product page views by cities? So I run this query, and there you have it. And then I can go ahead and stop the pipeline. And this is basically what I had um, set up for, for this webinar. Uh, 